right, and hello everyone, and welcome to the second session of Mass Effect Icarus. For the new and or curious viewers, this is a Mass Effect 5e game. That means we're running the base game of Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, just with a Mass Effect skin and flavor applied to it. If you're interested in learning more about that, you can get the link from one of my mods in Twitch chat. Uh, before I uh, before we begin, I do want to say a few things. Uh, as we're all new to Mass Effect 5th, and some of us not only to Mass Effect, but in 5th edition in general, uh, we're likely to get some things wrong. All I ask is that you be civil in your corrections. Aside from that, I'd love it uh, if you could support the stream in some way, whether that's just chatting in chat, uh, following, sub, donation, bits, patron, really any support, it's perfectly fine by me. Uh, it's all greatly appreciated. And with that said, let's just go ahead and run the intro. Welcome back. As the intro just said, the year is 2183. The Council is seeking out new specters to fill the void left behind in the, in the wake of the Battle of the Citadel and the loss of Commander Shepard. To this end, they have contacted each of the player characters. They were all brought together aboard a Systems Alliance destroyer, the SSV Leonidas, and were en route to the Citadel when they picked up a distress call. They responded promptly, thwarting a Blue Suns raid on a Kowloon class freighter carrying a Krogan scientist, Guska. That same scientist has come aboard the Leonidas in the aftermath, feeling they would be much safer for it. It'll still be a few hours yet before the Leonidas arrives at the Citadel, so this is a perfect opportunity for our player characters to get to know one another, talk about the aftermath of their last encounter, things of that nature. So, our first scene is the interior of the Leonidas, or at least the space that has been assigned to the players. Now, this space is fairly open. Um, it is maybe about the size of a, a Walgreens or a CVS or a Rite Aid. Um, you know, that's sort of, I think I'm trying to remember the dimensions off the top of my head, but it's about the size of your average drugstore. Um, but what's really important is, aside from a few crates, aside from... Uh, a kitchen that is set into the wall. Uh, it's a very open area, meaning that you can probably play catch in here with whatever ball-shaped device you would feel uh, inclined to. Um, but since we have a new player among us, and since it's been a week and a half or two weeks since we played last, let's just go around and do some quick introductions to remind everyone who's playing what. So uh, let's start with uh, Juna, and we'll go around from there. I am Dunandaram Nakjam, a Quarian infiltrator. Uh, almost died last session. Ate a rocket. Thankfully, still here. All right. Up next, we have BZ. I think he's AFK. Ah, all right. Well, if he's AFK, we're going to go to Thorin. No, uh, it's, I'm sorry. It's, it was okay. chat. it's who hadn't eaten a rocket last time? Sorry. So it's BZ is a Asari. It's a cheerful pilot type person. Uh, biotic. Doesn't seem to... Still, still trying to get a feel for the character, so I never know what to say in these kind of introductions yet. Seems chipper and optimistic, though, so far. Fair enough. All right, Thorin, what you got? Thorin Cruel is a uh, rather tall uh, and more stockier build Turian. Um, he did eat a rocket uh, last session as well, but uh, he's, he's fine. He's good. All right. He managed um, to dodge it. Next is Oran, or Oran. I never remember how to say it. I'm still figuring that out myself. Uh, Oran is a Batarian. 
uh, former pirate turned Spectre. Or Spectre wannabe at this point, I suppose. Uh, he also ate a rocket, but thankfully the rocket was uh, rolled bad damage, so he's okay. All right, and next up we have Penn and Gollin. Uh, Bishop should be hopefully joining us shortly, but uh, for anyone curious, he is indeed playing in Elcor, so complete with the voice, and it's pretty great. Um, but last but not least, we have our uh, player who wasn't able to join us this week, but or last week, and is able to join us now. Uh, Scotty, tell us a little bit about Martin. So Martin's an engineer from Earth. This is really his first time outside of uh, Earth. Uh, he's Irish, so all the stereotypical redhead, all that. Okay. And uh, all of you are actually just getting to meet Martin for the first time because he's coming out of cryosleep. Uh, right about now and is walking into this situation. So, Martin, you have been asleep or cryoed for, I would say, about a week, maybe a month, if you're pushing it. But you are just basically waking up and walking into a room with a hell of a lot of aliens. I'm just going to walk in and kind of look through the room and go, oh, boy. Ah, uh, the human, late to the party as always. I grin. I go up and clap you on the back of the sh back of the shoulder. Good to have you up and around, though. I was afraid that your cryopod had malfunctioned. Well, this was my first time away from Earth, so it was a little bit longer to get me up and running. I've honestly never seen a human up close. I kind of walk over and kind of look around. I'm kind of poking your hair and twisting a little bit. Is this is this like sensory? What, what what does this serve? If you touch him, he gets to touch you back. It's only fair. Martin's just like he has a strange look on his face. This is my first time away from Earth, so you're gonna have to bear with me, as this is a whole new experience. Government bureaucracy at its finest, making a peace force or making a galaxy wide law enforcement agency, and they pick a human who has never been outside a solar system. Don't count me out. I know my way around. So I've, I've seen pictures of humans, but I've never seen ones with uh, the, uh, the, the cilia on your head, this color. Is this normal? It's like continuing to rip on a finger and twirl the hair. My hair? Well, it's normal for the area of Earth that I am from. Uh, I'm originally from a city called Belfast. So um, that area, it's very well known that the red, dark red, blondish hair is pretty normal. Fascinating. Oh, is it, does it like detect pressure or what is it? Uh, wind sensitivity? Uh, maybe at one point in time in human evolution, but anymore, it's just aesthetic. And why do you have it? Why not? Thorne's going to get up and walk over to BZ and put his hand on her shoulder. He's like, it's just their thing. I suppose that it is. Okay. I mean, there's not many other creatures with hair. Hair is... It's ha ha hair? Hair, yes. Yeah. Weird. Well, I've never seen a Quarian. Do Quarians have ha hair? As I look at uh, Juna. It doesn't matter, because we can only live in our suit. Nicely avoided. <laughs> Bye. It's funny that you say, uh, Oron, that they've screwed up choosing a human that's never been off of Earth, considering that you yourself are Batarian, which is quite the interesting choice. While my and the rest of the party's uh, resentfulness of working with the Batarian was obvious at first, I will happily say that after working with you on that mission, you handled yourself very well, and I look forward to working with you more. 
I appreciate that. I was worried about a, the frailty of the Quarians, but you have done well yourself. And I just speak aloud to the group, although I make eye contact with um, BZ and Thorn the most when I say the following. I would, uh, I am attempting to become a, I'm attempting to represent the best parts of Batarian culture. Please don't pin the, or please do not use me as a, as an example, or blame the worst parts of Batarian culture on me. I can't fix it any more than you can fix yours. And at that, I'm just going to turn on my heels, uh, wander away to a, a, ah, a couch on a corner, and pull out a guitar and start playing a melody. I feel like I, do I need to make this a check. Like, I, I just have this urge that this should be a check yeah. of some sort. Uh, performance is actually a skill. Yeah, let's let's get a performance here. Okay. Well, 21. that is mm -hmm. uh, quite the performance. You may embellish as you wish. It's a fairly simple melody. Um, no other aliens or none of the other non-humans would recognize it. There's a chance that Martin or Marin, Martin, 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 Martin would know it based if depending on how his classical music comes out. But it's a fairly simple melody. Are you playing Wonderwall? No. Good, because if you had been playing Wonderwall, I might have had words. Nope, I will not play Wonderwall. Freebird, maybe, but not Wonderwall. This is acceptable. It's the theme from King of the Hill. <laughs> nah. It's actually Sound of Silence for if Martin Ooh. chooses to recognize it. Thorin's just going to look at Orin and then look back at everyone. Like, so he's the sensitive type I see. Martin's just going to take note that Oren has a good taste in music. That's uh, right the about way. then. That uh, the door to your little area, I would call it home away from home, but you haven't really moved in yet. But uh, the door opens, and stepping through is a uh, purple-hued Krogan. Now, since Scotty is new, a Krogan <laughs> is basically a... Rather bulky, rather large lizard-like race um, that are rather known for their, I wouldn't call it hostility. I would basically compare them to a Klingon if a Klingon actually uh, looked in more imposing. Um, but uh, this Krogan, as they walk in, all of you recognize this is the same Krogan you rescued uh, on that freighter. And they sort of walk in, take a look around and say... I uh, heard you all were going to the Citadel. Mind if I catch a bride? You're going to ask the captain. Well, I've already cleared it through him. He told me to ask you all. Oh. Oh. Sure. And what in the hells is that god-awful racket? And he looks around, settles on Oron, and goes, Oh, you're attempting to play music. I can understand you not recognizing it because it doesn't involve the smashing of large objects against other objects and senseless screaming. What else would you call music? That's exactly what music should be. Krogan percussionism is very poetic at times. <laughs> you call it poetic? I mean, the sound of blood splattering across rocks. That's what gets me up in the morning. Well, it's the, the, the drums. I've seen a couple of Krogan drumming. So it's very danceable. Well, Kirvin is shimmy. And uh, Guska, as she is named, just sort of chuckles to herself and goes and finds her own little corner of the room to hide in. <laughs> well, last mission, by the way. Good job, everyone, on not dying. Juno, good job on avoiding explosions. Managed to get out, okay? Half pen and goblin, thankfully. Well, it's good that everyone survived. And decent teamwork, too. Ooh, 
we definitely need to work on our teamwork if we're going to be continuing to operate as a unit until one of us is accepted as a specter and the rest are um, trash. Uh, for example, maybe coordinating not drawing the fire of multiple fire teams at once and focusing fire in single areas. And not we definitely spread ourselves out and left ourselves vulnerable. I agree with that assessment. Martin, what do you bring to the table? Mainly an engineer. Not haven't been much of a fighter. Although I am a fast learner. Well, we'll take you to the weapon range and get you some training done if needed. And Thorns is going to walk over to his locker and he's going to pull out a small pad and he's just going to start typing some things out on it. Look. Okay. So, Juna and I both appear to be range types. Daisy is biotic. Orin likes to get up close and personal. Benegalan is just a walking wall. Objection. And Martin, wall is an overstatement. Walking fortification. <laughs> Relentful. This is acceptable. Yeah. Mobile yeah, artillery Martin. unit, perhaps. He also he can take a couple of hits too. And Martin, engineer, you say? Indeed. Okay. We'll figure out what you can do too. I hope to get everyone's understanding of their abilities so we can build a proper team. Have you all in your proper places so you can perform effectively. And that includes you, Arun. Of course. I am part of this cast and will contribute. And let's see. Yeah, well, the good news is, though, Juno, is I mean you don't have to ration any food. No one here is going to eat the Dexter amino. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that, since this is an alliance vessel, that they have taken those precautions already. I'm actually going to go check the kitchen. Do they have food for Turians and Aquarians? Why don't you uh, roll me a standard perception check? Okay. And I'm mostly doing this so that uh, Scotty can get a feel for rolling, even though I haven't had him roll yet, um, just so you can see what's going on. Uh, with a 20, uh, you're more than easily able to find both foods suitable for um, yourselves, a Corian, a Krogan, um, you pretty much were right on the money when you said that as an alliance vessel, they are pretty well kitted. Interesting. Well, it looks like we're good here in food. You want anything right now, Juno? I'm fine. He's going to take a little bar for himself. Be like, easy. Yes? You've never seen a human before? No, they never got to my particular colony. I, well, not there were some there, but I never met them personally. They were always trading at different ports. Mm. It's a big city, big galaxy. Okay. I'm I'm guessing since you're out here and roaming around, you're still pretty young. I'm still in my maiden phase. That's correct. <laughs> my stepdaughter just as um is leaving the maiden phase and starting to settle down. Sorry, stepdaughter? Yes, I'm married to an Asari. Hmm. It must If she's already becoming a matron, then she must be quite a bit uh, older than, well, than, than you. Yeah. It must be awkward having a stepdaughter that is was alive before you were born. Oh, really? My wife was alive before I was born by a good while. From the corner, there's a laugh from Guska as she just sort of finds this conversation rather amusing. 
What's so funny over there? <laughs> it's funny how all you non Krogans put so much value on family. You know how we do it. We just sort of get together, have a lot of fun. And he, she looks very pointedly up Martin. Maybe I shouldn't go into the details, but uh, it's glorious. We, we, we're not really tied down by your feelings of marriage. Ugh. Are you it's, one of the few fertile ones? She looks very pointedly at you, and she bats her eyes very uncharacteristically at Krogan and says, Would you like to find out? I've done worse. She just sort of laughs very heartily and says, <laughs> Maybe Ladies one and gentlemen, day. sorry. It's very uh, forced to not have your culture take a lot of interest in love, especially when every nine, well, only one out of a thousand survive birth. Yeah, it's still a shitty thing the Turians and the Salarians did, but uh, hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> Thoris is going, yeah, I didn't make that decision. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I've thought about punching that one over there, and she points at Thorin in the face a few times, just because he's wearing a smug look, but, uh, you know. Figured I'd be civil. I didn't think Turians had looks other than smug. You gotta, you gotta look just... past the mandibles. Just turns around and gives her a smug look. The smug look is it's all in the eyes. The smugness is entirely eyebrow-related. <laughs> and it is about then uh, that there is a chime on the intercom, and it is your good buddy, Exo Jensen. And Jensen says, uh, just a reminder or an update for you all in the cargo bays. We will be arriving in the Citadel in about 15 minutes, so get your things ready. Get ready if you're disembarking, etc., etc. Oh, and uh, if anybody knows where the Krogan is, uh, tell them the same thing. And then their intercom turns, out, turns off. Thorne's going to get up and he's going to go to his locker and start packing up a little duffel bag. As will I. Alrighty. Oh, so, I suppose I have seen a human before. I saw Jensen. I was just distracted by that thing under his nose. It, it completely... I forgot what species he was. That's, that's facial hair. Even Again, why? Decoration. I, I think it's a mating thing, actually. The I bigger just, it is, the more it, mates they have. I, I just looked at it, and I was focused entirely. I thought it was some sort of parasite or small Oof. insect no. attached to his if, face. If I remember correctly, it's called a moustache. Well, that's what a moustache is. It's on the <laughs> face. Oh, I, I read some literature, and I totally expected the moustache to be somewhere else, farther down. Oh, like a piercing. Awesome. We all just look at Martin. <laughs> Martin, oh, do you have a oh. mustache? I don't, no. under, I don't understand what you find so fascinating about humans. I see that I have a lot of teaching to do. <laughs> it's nice to see a human after a while. It's so good to have you with us. I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'm intrigued at what we're going to come across. Rockets, apparently. <laughs> Many of them. I'll make sure to duck. Actually, you said you haven't seen... You haven't been off Earth. So have you actually seen any of our species before? Uh, some pictures. Not necessarily interactions with any one specific species. Um, I've done most of my business with the Earth governments... Um, in establishing colonies, um, making sure their uh, all of their buildings are up to code, make sure that they can withstand anything, everything. Thorns is going to have a little bit of a confused look on his face as he looks back. Everyone's like, "How did?" So you're a builder, and you're being pulled into the Spectre program. It seems so. Sure, I guess they need some specters that can build outside the law. Of course. Building codes are for suckers. I mean, I suppose it'd be easier to take a engineer and teach him how to shoot someone in the face than it is to take uh, someone who knows how to shoot someone in the face and teach him how to build a house. 
Typically, a Spectre is supposed to have years of combat training, though. Not to freeze under fire or panic at a tough situation. You make the call then there. Well, does anyone really expect another human to become a Spectre after Shepard? I mean, he was a Spectre for 30 seconds and went nuts and started talking about giant robot Cthulhu aliens. Well, he did help the Geth, or he did help dis- defeat the Geth on the Citadel, so that's points to him. Maybe they're thinking lightning can strike twice. Actually, the humans have advanced pretty quickly in terms of political. Uh, the fact that they now have a human counselor before, what, the Volus? The Elcor? Definitely the Batarian. He just looks at Batarian, that Orin. If the if the, the council made their alliance or made their distaste of the Batarians known when they favored the humans, I don't blame them for picking human first. I will say though that the humans, some say stubbornness, is inspiring in a sense, and I found it to be quite intriguing and awakening as to why the Koreans don't have any representation. Well, I'm pretty sure the reason you Koreans don't have any representation has to do with synthetics. Well, that and they can't even find a single colony world. Yeah, too. We got we there as much as a problem for us than anybody else, if not more so. Right. It is at that right. point that uh, if any of you are near one of the windows, you look outside and you see yourself arriving at the Citadel. Now, again, since we have someone new, the Citadel is basically a very large, well, almost gigantic uh, space station said to have been built by the Protheans long, long ago. And it is somewhat of a, uh, a starfish, if you will, where it has five arms that come out from a circular ring. And every single one of the interior of those arms is basically a massive city unto itself. Um, the amount of people that live here is probably in the hundreds of thousands, if not somewhere close to a million. It's really dependent on what lore you look at, how many are here. But... The point I'm trying to make is that there's a lot of people living here. Uh, this is the sort of seat of the galactic government for a good reason. And your ship, the Leonidas, uh, soars in past the five open arms until it reaches a docking port uh, in the inner ring, also known as the Presidium. And as you sort of grab your stuff, disembark, uh, a gentleman catches you, uh, in fact, it's Exo Jensen. Exo Jensen catches you on your way out of the airlock and says, Right, uh, for you Spectre types, uh, I was told you should head to CSEC Academy. Apparently you have an Asari waiting for you. Understood. Thank you. <laughs> right. I remember getting dragged there the first time I showed up. Uh, Thorne is going to do the Alliance Salute to uh, Exo Jensen. He returns up. As so I walk past, I continue to just stare at the mustache and just raise one eye ridge. <laughs> I see PZ do the like. Oh, come on, come on. I'm coming, I'm coming. Exasperated. Thanks. It's not even that good of a beard. And Jensen's like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like, uh, how does he eat with not? <laughs> that's their seek. That's how they save food for later. Uh, not quite. Oh, I'll explain it to you later. <laughs> so, uh, what happens next is one of those fa- infamous uh, elevator rides where you're taking a lift from the uh, docking bay down to CSEC. And uh, today, they don't really have on any news. It's just that annoying little jazz jingle that they have going on out of character i love that song <laughs> I, I i legitimately tried to find it and put it in as like waiting music but i couldn't find a long enough loop of it unfortunately 
This is my ringtone. Oh dear. But eventually, if you don't know Scotty, the first game, it got around loading screens because they would put you in an elevator and the elevator rides were a good minute long. So, And I feel like anyone who's a played Mass Effect, that song is ingrained into their memory. Mm -hmm. But uh, long story short, you do eventually arrive as the elevator stops at the CSEC Academy. Now, CSEC Academy is what you would expect if you've seen the games, but for those who haven't, uh, it's a big, expansive space with complete with trees, uh, many offices, uh, there's even training rooms, uh, lots of open space and generally a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uniformed individuals walking around. A lot of Turians, some humans, some Solarians. Uh, but what really catches your eye is the Asari that is waiting for you or appears to be waiting for you because as soon as you step off the elevator, uh, she comes right up to you. And this Asari is almost pink. It, it's some kind of pink purple. Um, she also appears to have a sort of an air about her uh, that would suggest either confidence that has been born from experience or some form of cockiness, I would say. Uh, there's definitely a way she carries herself that would suggest that she knows who she is and what she can do. Um, but she walks up to all of you and says, Right, you must be the Spectre candidates. My name is Tyresa, and I will be your, uh, what is the expression, your liaison for this little experiment? That works. Ma'am, my name to meet is Thorn Cruel, and it is a pleasure to meet you. Mm. Just so you know, they have me doing orientation for you Spectre wannabes instead of me actually doing actual Spectre work. So appreciate the time I'm giving you. Thorn's mandibles will just click lightly. Right, well... What we're going to do is we're going to start you off with a simulation. Now, uh, this simulation, it's pretty simple. There are some hostages. We want to see what you can do about saving those hostages. I will, of course, uh, tell you that this is not a live ammo operation, so make sure to switch out your clips before you step into the simulation room. We don't need our drones shot up, and we don't need you shot up. Understood. All right, if you'll follow me this way. And she leads you off into one of the adjoining corridors. And eventually you come to a sort of a control station that overlooks a very wide and expansive white corridor or white gridded area. Uh, it's basically like if someone took a cube, um, maybe even a holodeck from Star Trek. If you just made a huge one of those and then um, sort of cut a cube sized area out of the surrounding station um but there's an elevator that goes down into the space and Teresa sort of points to it and says when you're ready head through there and we'll begin the simulation when you are ready i will remain up here and provide colorful commentary about how you're screwing up hopefully we get a commentary about how well we're doing too she snorts in a little bit of a laughter, but doesn't dignify it with a better response. You're the optimistic one, aren't you, Thorin? I will remind you that the only reason we are here is because three of your other specters have fucked. Thorin just got to walk to Juno and I was like, Okay, let's make an enemy of our instructor. Tyrese Teresa, I think, is a better person than she lets on. She doesn't let it get to her and just sort of rolls her eyes. But yeah, uh, I'm going to put you guys on our combat map for today. Oh, uh, as everyone's going in, Thorne is checking everyone's clips just to make sure they are switched out. Noted. All right, so let me describe what you're seeing on screen for those who don't have access to a screen or are listening in a podcast version. So what you step down into as the simulation comes to life 
is a uh, uh, oh i need to shrink you for some reason i don't know why you're super large. there is a giant quarian tower. <laughs> <laughs> apparently there is a you know giant quarian just in the simulation now there we go all right uh what you're seeing is actually just sort of like a presidium style uh atrium where the open space is made up with very colorful tile uh with patterns all over the place uh there is almost like an over what is it? A, an upside down U that sort of lines the area around the central part of the atrium. Uh, that is made up of plants, bushes, and other greenery. Um, as far as cover comes, there's not a whole lot of cover here. Um, in fact, there is pretty much the cover down to the south, uh, which are stairs that go down maybe about chest height, if that. Uh, and sort of further to the south, there is a simulated little mass relay. Like, you could probably find this if you went to the Presidium and uh, just sort of walked out and, you know, explored the uh, Presidi Presidium a little bit. But what's important to you all is the fact that there are a number of mechs and dro drones waiting for you here. Um, you see the... Uh, hollow images of what appear to be humanoids. Uh, in fact, they are all human. Uh, they're wearing bags over their heads, probably because, you know, who actually would put a face on a hostage in a simulation. Um, but there are four of them, and in front of those are Rampart mechs. Now, these Rampart mechs, uh, if anyone would care to uh, assess them, I would take a perception, or I would take... Uh, oh, is it still what I think it is... I would take an engineering as well. So BZ either an looks engineering at or a perception. I'll do an engineering. All righty. I'll do perception. I can do perception, and I add my proficiency bonus to this. So engineering as well. Yeah, 22 for me. 22. All right. So it looks like who are we missing? Who hasn't rolled is the question. BZ uh, is. BZ is. Um, okay. Right All right. So everybody that is not BZ or Juna... Uh, what you're finding out as you stare at these mechs is that you know they are actually not shielded. They are the rare type of mech, or rare type of synthetic, that actually does not have a shield array. Uh, however, you do know that they can deploy a hex shield that your Elcor buddy uh, could potentially deploy himself. And actually, as you look around, you see that... Uh, certain Elcor has not joined you for the simulation. And if you were to look up at the control booth, uh, you would see that they are in what appears to be conversation with your Asari teacher? Handler? Whatever you'd want to call him at this point. Well, she's certainly our Elcor friend's handler. Recommend getting up close and personal on the mechs before they can drop the draw. They're shields. Mm, if we get too close, they may turn and shoot the hostages. We should first find a way to disable them or at least delay their action. Are we seen where we are? Are we hidden? Uh, if you were to duck down, you would be able to hide yourself, but otherwise the walls are about chest height. I could potentially depending on our chances, ward off three or four of them to stop from attacking the hostage. If you can do the three, do the three in the center, and then I will focus on one of the closer assault drones off to the side. And if someone else has a ranged weapon, get the other one. I might be able to get some of them in a biotic field. We are lucky. Yeah, whatever we can do to disable those three main ones. And over the intercom, you hear your Asari friend, as I'm calling her. Uh, she says, well, I hope you're ready, because we're activating the simulation in three, two, and the simulation begins. Now, is each hex one meter? Ah uh, yes, each hex or each square. Each square. We decided. Yeah. Each square okay, should cool. be one meter. And uh, why don't we go ahead and roll initiative? Uh, so Scotty, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to um, select your token, and then on your character sheet, you're going to hit the initiative button. Should be near the top, 
and it will automatically add you to the turn order. Now, this is different from Star Trek Adventures, which you're familiar with, where we actually go by initiative order. Gotcha. So let's see. They have a grand total of not a whole lot, but I'll roll for them anyway. Let's see. Oh, apparently they actually are going to be going rather quickly. All right, so that's a 19. And I got to remember, because uh, I can't use my numpad, because that's what my uh, emotes are tied to on my uh, little virtual avatar. So I got to remember I can't do that. <laughs> Um, All right, and they have a grand total of two as well. Okay. Well, apparently they're going last with that roll. All right, looks like everybody's in turn order, so let's sort descending and go from there. So, uh, Thorn, just as the Asari counts down, uh, the mechs and the drones uh, fire up to life and begin twitching around, looking for targets, things of that nature. So, how do you proceed? Well, I'm assuming we all got we all ducked down, right? Yeah, cover is mm -hmm. pretty much just doomed. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to uh, I'm going to hold my action. That's so like uh, this assault drone here. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is uh, sorry, it's been a bit. So I'm just trying to remember sorry, everything that's here. Wrong button. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to do tactical cloak, mm -hmm. so invisible, and uh, I'm going to prop up and take aim at this one here. I'm going to wait uh, and hope that everyone is going to do something to disable these three guys in, the, in one go, and when that happens, I'm going to fire at him at this one here. Okay. So you're holding your action, which means uh, on the Rampart's turn, they haven't seen any enemies. They haven't seen any reason to do anything but stand still. So they're just going to hold their action, and we're going to proceed from there. So Martin, what do you got for me? I want to fire my M5 Phalanx. Okay. Um. I'm going to go for, like, oops, this one. That one there? Okay. What is the uh, range on your fail mix? Uh, it is 20 slash to 60, I believe. Yeah, you're fine. So, yeah, what you're going to do uh, is you're going to click the fail mix button. It should roll an attack. A 10. Uh, I'm going to say that they are surprised. So, with advantage you would get a 22 that's what so when it rolls scotty is your first roll is what we would normally take um if you have advantage we take the highest number if you have disadvantage we take the lowest number um so you have scored a hit with that 22 and what you want to do now is click on the m5 fail yep you've already figured it out so yeah you're going to do four piercing damages you pop up fire shot off hit the rampart mech and is there anything else you would like to do on your turn before they react? Duck back down. Okay. That works. So uh, what happens is the Rampart mechs are going to use their held action, and they are going to deploy their hex shielding as their reaction. So let me get a color that we can all see. So there's a shield there. A shield there and a shield there and hopefully you all can see that blue line mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right so that is their held action so up next we have bz what do you have going on bz has a gravity field which has a range of 30 meters so i should be able to hit like right between the big three Let's see. there we go all right, so it's a so DC. I to do a long rest in this sheet. So. Okay. So let's see, so a uh, DC 15 strength. Very good. Uh, Creates so a six meter cube, so I should be able to get all three of them. Uh, duration of space becomes difficult terrain. Creatures there as you cast a spell. Must succeed on a strength saving throw or be restrained until the spell ends. All right. Well, they have a plus three to this. So first one fails. 
First, second one succeeds just fine. Third one also succeeds. So just one of them. I'm going to say this, uh, this left one is hit by it. So they are restrained, yes? If they fail, yes. All right, so he is restrained. Let's use that icon. Put it there so I don't get the hostages. <clears throat> okay. Now, does that okay. field persist? Yes, it lasts for a concentration up to one minute. So I'm concentrating on that spell. All righty. Noted. All right, so up next, Oron, what do you got going on? Well, uh, how high up is the hex shield? Uh, the hex shield is large enough that it is able to cover both them completely, and uh, it does offer full cover. So okay. you do, I believe it's a plus five to their AC if they're in full cover. Okay. Let me look that up. I think it's if they're in full cover, you just can't hit them, period. Let's take a look. Uh, they are in total cover, so a target with total cover cannot be targeted directly by an attack or spell, although some spells can reach such a target by including it in an area of effect. Okay, okay. so Beasley doing the gravity field would work. Uh, you just can't shoot this uh, mech directly. Yeah, um, and this is going to be important for my action. How high up is the wall? So from base to tip, is it one meter, two? Uh, I would say two meters. Two meter, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, let's see. I cover my spell casting ability score, which is enough. Okay, I am literally going to use my uh, law, my biotic jump. Okay. Which will allow me to leap over the two meter height. So, um, uh, which I believe. So my spell casting score is. Uh, my wisdom, which is a 14, mm -hmm. which will more than enough to get me into their midst. And then I am going to smash that one with my axe. Okay, go for it. Oh, I guess my held action goes off now. Oh, yeah, well, critical. Ooh, nice. very nice. You have scored a critical. Let's see that crit damage. Okay. So you do a total well, of 16 damage to it. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So you come down and, I and should, cleave yeah. uh, its arm, its leg, its chest. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm basically just going to lop off, or at least attempt to lop off one of the arms holding one of the holding the gun. Okay. And I would say I, you, yeah. you definitely injure it, but it is still holding its gun, unfortunately. Oh, well. Uh, I should note that, unlike the ammunition, my axe is at its full sharpness and is doing actual damage to these things. Noted. I should... They will probably yell at me after which. I don't care. <laughs> well, they're already going to yell at you because there's a uh, thing over the intercom. As uh, Tyresa says, hey, what did I say about... <sighs> Whatever. We don't have time to swap it out now. And up next is Juna. Oh, does, right. does my held action trigger? Oh, it does, yes. Uh, but give me one moment, because apparently my avatar is freaking out for some reason. So let me fix that. One moment. <laughs> now I'm watching the stream to see what it happens. Okay. Sorry about that. Again, there's growing pains with this newfangled technology that I have going on, so we do what we can. Anyway, yes, your held action does go off. Okay. And it's just my sniper shot at the assault drone. Okay. Um, since I'm hidden, my sneak kicks in, too. Mm-hmm. So, yep. Yeah. yeah, you're going to hit it with an 18. And sneak. Oh, but I forgot to press that again. Yep. Uh, 22 damage in total. And that is actually enough that uh, it has exactly that much HP, including its shield. So you uh, fire your Mantis, shot rings out, and it impacts the drone, immediately knocks it out of the fight. It just sort of falls to the ground and enters a uh, deactivated state. Because again, simulated ammo. Yep. All right. Now it's Juna's turn. All right. Um... It's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 
14, 16. Okay, I'm like exactly in range. Uh, on the rampant, mo the rampant uh, mechs, I will cast, get up from behind cover and cast Invasion. Okay. Wall of text. Wall of text indeed. All right. Yeah, ignore so... the sneak attack. I don't know why it's on there. Target must make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, the target takes 1d8 disadvantage or 1d8 psychic and has disadvantage on the attack rolls until the spell ends. Alright, uh where are you targeting this? All three of the rampant rampart max. Uh I would say that you can't target them specifically because again, they have full cover. It, 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 the, the swarm I imagine would go like because it's just a, basically a swarm of nanobites that can just fly around. Yeah, I would say you, if you were to target the shield, uh, it would spread. But no, you it, that's sort of the, the perils of full cover, is you literally cannot shoot through cover. It's or target shooting. anything through cover. You could fireball through it. Alright, uh, then... Yeah, and then just target the shield i guess and then the other two will bounce off of that to the other to these two yeah it'll bounce to those two all right so they need to make a constitution save they have a minus one to this so not a, not a whole lot of rolling for them but let's see what happens uh that one fails that one fails all right so uh the little nanobite or nanobot swarm flies out and begins harrowing the mechs and the mechs are suffering a little bit of disadvantage one of them's not having a good day at all. He's also restrained. And they also oh, no, take... not, not the one that's restrained. These two I want to do the hit with the bounce. Okay. In that case, uh, let's see. All right. They're going to take six psychic. Six psychic. Very well. Anything else? Um, just add, yeah, bonus action, activate tactical cloak, and then move a bit two four six eight and uh, that's about as far as i can get but i'll be invisible as i'm trying to move in okay all right up next is going to be all the assault drones and uh as you can probably gather what they're going to do is fly past the little bit of cover you're hiding behind at the moment and this one can go let's see this one can get right about there and they are going to open fire. One's going to be at Thorin, one's going to be at Beezy, and one's going to be at Martin, because those are the only targets on the field that they can sense at the moment. All right, so this is going to be a grand total of plus four to hit. All right. So I'm going to roll left to right. So this is going to be for Thorin first. A 17. Uh, that will hit. All right. Uh, 16 for Martin. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, look at your AC. What is your AC right now? 15. Then a 16 will hit. And then BZ, I don't think a 10 hits you. S somehow you miss BZ. She is wearing, like, clothes. And that's about it. <laughs> right. So to paint the picture, these drones swoop over and they begin firing with their pulse rifles. And they sort of tear into Thorin and Martin's shields. Uh, so let's see. That's a grand total of 1d10 plus 2 damage. And I get to roll two here. So one's going to be, this is Thorin's damage. So, well, it would help if I put a zero, not a parentheses. Uh, Thorin, you're going to take uh, five damage. So I believe that's just your shields. Martin, you're going to suffer ten damage. So you're going to suffer sure. the uh, five damage to your shield, which is the blue bar. And then you're going to suffer five damage to your actual health, which is your pink bar. Which is that. Yep, you've got it. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, as the pulse rifle rings out, Thorin's shields drop, Martin's shields uh, drop as well, and then the simulated ammo slams into you. It's like getting hit by a paintball, uh, all things considered, but you're getting painted quite a bit. And with that, we uh, end the first round. We start the second one with Mr. Thorin. He's so invisible, he's not speaking. Whoops. 
Haha, <laughs> you did. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> um, I am going to hop over uh, this here. Oh, four, six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hop over that. And I'll move back a little bit. And as my bonus action, I am going to do stimulant package. And uh, incinerate on the assault drum. Okay. So I'm going to pop this first because that's my bonus action. And then, yeah, incinerate on the uh, assault drum. Okay. Yeah. A 15. Well, a 15 as you hurl your little bit of fire at them. A 15 is just enough to hit. And I'm assuming you meant this assault drone here? Yeah, yeah, the one that shot me. Uh, I will say that this is a holographic fire. Right, right, so. right. <laughs> Unlike certain people who uh, carry live axes into simulations. Because, you know, that's what you do. I'm, I refuse to swap it out for the nerf variety. Yeah, it is probably a nerf, a nerf bat of some sort. <laughs> oh, that didn't get the long rest. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. That's right, so eight fire. So the fire washes over it, immediately taking out its shields, and it bites a little bit into the quote unquote HP of the drone. Uh, it's still flying though; like it's not having any difficulty whatsoever keeping afloat. Okay. All right. So up next is the rampart max. Which uh, BZ, do I need to be doing saving throws for them starting in your area of effect? Um, if they've already made the saving throw, no. Although the one that failed, I think, needs to can repeat it. Okay. Um, oh, can repeat it as an action. All restrained right. Restrained, except restrained or not. All right. Then the one that uh, was restrained is going to attempt to break free. Uh, it is a con check, yes? Strength. Strength. Well, that's... Uh, it's a plus three for them. All right. Uh, does an 11 beat the DC? No. All right. So that one remains restrained. And then the two that are right next to Oron, uh, this one's actually going to come around his shield to Oron, and both of them are going to attack you with their own Omni Blades. So let's see, they have disadvantage to hit. And I think, yeah, I'm rereading it now. It's a, it's a constitution check as an action if they want to try and break out of it. No, nope, they don't feel like breaking out of it. All right, so this is going to be... I'm just going to roll 2d20. Uh, K, I forget if it's keep lowest or keep highest. We'll just roll 2d20 and see what they roll. Uh, so they would be taking that 13 plus 5 and 18 to hit you. Uh, that will hit. Okay, we'll resolve that in a moment. The next one, uh, does a 16 hit you? That also hits. All right. So as their Omni Blades tear into you, you are going to take a grand total of this much damage. Total of nine okay. damage. Not a whole lot of damage as they slice into you. Uh, so shield goes down, and then I take four out of that. Mm -hmm. um, I shout to BZ, drop the field. I have an idea. Okay. All right. And up, up next is Martin. So as a drone jockey, I want to see if I can take control of the assault drones. Okay. I don't know if I can actually do that, but I... I no, like that I, I think it's, a, uh, it's an innovative idea. So let's have you roll, because I don't know if the engineer has anything special for that. Let's call it, uh, let's call it an electronics here. All right, an eight or a 25. Unfortunately, with an eight, you get nowhere. So you maybe pull up your Omni tool, which is a holographic thing that wraps around your arm and is like a haptic enabled interface where it, you know, kind of does holographic screens and you push holographic buttons, things of that nature. And you try to tap into the assault drones uh, command and control system. And it seems like they have, for lack of a better word, they have strengthened the, the, uh, the system against would-be hackers, almost as if many many a uh, recruit, be they CSEC or Spectre, uh, have tried this tactic before. So you still can move. That was your action. You still can move. 
I'm going to jump up over the wall. Okay. Just kind of put something in between me and the drone. Okay. So just like up there. Alrighty. BZ, what you got going on? BZ is going to... Um, uh, B- since BZ was shot at, BZ used biotics to grab the bullets in the air, which is why they missed, and is going to flick her hand and hurl them back. Is how I'm flavoring throw today. I like it. And that's totally not going to hit. That's like Yeah, a unfortunately, hit. a 10 is not enough. The uh, bullets, such as they are, just sort of ping off the side of the assault drone. Uh, it makes you feel better, but yeah. uh, it it does not actually impact the drone in any way. All right, so I, I dropped my field since it is not an action. That Rampart mech is now no longer restrained. Okay. Uh, and as my bonus action, I'm going to activate my little barrier. And then I walk right up to it. Punch it in the face when I get it. All okay. Right, it's me. Oran, you are surrounded by many mechs. Okay. Uh, action. Activate barrier. Okay. Uh, bonus action. Barrier detonation. Okay. Uh, so. It's, it's going to hit all of them. Yep. Yeah, they need to each roll a DC 12 strength check. Okay. DC 12 plus 3 first one succeeds second one succeeds third one does not okay uh, which one so the one that failed um, levitates off the... uh, sorry which one uh, this one here uh, that one. so it's lifted off the ground Okay. and it's condition is lifted and primed force I was hoping that would be a little more successful. Oh, well, say lovey. Um, and so I still have a movement action, but I choose not to take it. All right. Noted. Juno. So that, yeah. As lifted, it counts as restrained. Noted. <clears throat> All right. So which of the, which assault drone was it that got hit by the incinerate? Uh, the one that got hit by incinerate is the one over across the courtyard from you this one here okay while i'm visible i'll take my step away from the drone and then action breaking stealth pop, take a shot at all righty sneak attack and uh advantage where is it but hey that's a crit nice yeah, with a 26 you definitely hit it and so I let's get see my uh I get my tech point back because I crit. And yeah, that is enough for you to take out that drone. It too falls to the ground and deactivates itself. Broke self. Uh, two, four, six. Uh, eight, ten. I can get to there. And then... The bonus action dash. So that's another two, four, six, eight. 10, get up. Okay. That's my turn. Alrighty. Up next is going to be the Assault Drones. And uh, the Assault Drone nearest to BZ is going to attack BZ. Uh, The other one that hasn't been touched is actually going to fly over in this direction and is going to go after Juna. God damn it. (laughs) Yeah. Almost like you're the biggest threat right now. All right, so this one is going to be versus Juna. I will, I will reaction sabotage, uh, so it has disadvantage on. Me. Uh, okay, Ooh. it's it oh. still has rolled a twenty even with disadvantage. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> All right, I'll roll that in a second, and then for BZ, uh, yeah, I think that hits you as well. All right, so first damage to Juna. Is going to be a grand total of 10 Radiant. And then to BZ, uh, you're taking 12. So the Assault Drones open fire with their Pulse Rifles, uh, doing their damnedest to tear through your shields. And it does seem that they are met with at least some limited success in that regard, uh, as both Juna and BZ's shielding drops. And Thorin, it is now your turn. Top of round three. All right. I am going to bonus action attempt to reload. Okay. 
which is sleight of hand, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh, one sec, I just need to double check the stimulant package here. Do I think I can add to it, or is that just a save? I think it's attacks and saving throws if I remember the text correctly. Yes. Okay, so uh, yeah. Yeah, with a 23, Yay. you can read it. Nice. Uh, I'm seeing Juna being chased by that assault drone, and I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> and I am going to shoot at it. Okay. And. Uh, it, well, yeah, I need to he, with a 14, through. is enough to hit it. Excellent. And. Two. Go for that. 16. 16. So your shot slams into it, again, doing uh, the stereotypical, uh, you know, shields going down. However, uh, unlike your last shot, this one is not enough to one-hit kill it. Uh, instead, it is badly damaged, or at least it's putting off fake amount of sparks to indicate that it is such uh, damage. But it's still flying in the air, unfortunately. <laughs> and then I'm going to move. Okay. There we go. And that's my turn. All right, so one of the Rampart mechs is flying, so he can't do anything at the moment. But the other two, other two, this one's actually going to stay where it is, and it's going to open fire with its M23 katana. So uh, let's have him, actually, let's have them both roll katanas for ease of rolling. So this first one does not have disadvantage. I believe a 21 does hit you. Oh, yes. And then, because he's rolling disadvantage, uh, does an 18 hit you? It would. Oh, you might be in trouble here then. All right, that's going to be a grand total of this much damage. You're going to be taking 23 damage. Ow. Okay, that's going to suck. Still up, but bleeding heavily. Mm-hmm. So the shotgun blasts slam into you, and if they weren't simulated rounds, you would definitely be feeling it right now. Uh, to the point of, you know, maybe this would be a good time to use Medigel kind of a thing. But that is all of their turns. Uh, can the lifted mech do anything, or is he just kind of stuck there? Uh, so he counts as restrained, so I don't think he can do anything. I believe he's got, like, disadvantage on attacks, but he attacks them. A restrained creep becomes zero. Attack rolls against this creature has advantage. Creature has disadvantage on saving throws. Yeah, it could still do advantage, I guess. Uh, creature's attack rolls have disadvantage. Okay. Then I think it, too, is going to fire its shotgun, but I don't have high hopes for it. <clears throat> Survey says, yeah, it's not going to hit you. Yeah. All right. With that all happening, Martin, what do you have going on? Uh... Seeing that Oran just got hit, I want to uh, run up there and hit him with my Omni. Okay. Because I think I, I have a speed of ten, so I can go ten squares. Mm -hmm. Um, each square is two meters worth of movement. Nope. It's one. No, nope, should be one. We've gone back and forth a couple. Yeah, uh, I'm seeing one meter per square. Yeah. That's what we agreed on, I believe. Yeah, and I one meter squares. So this would be like seven-ish. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the Omnitizer has a two meter range. Which is more than enough to hit him. All right, and, and that you would have be advantage. So yeah, go ahead and let's see your crit damage here. Not a whole <laughs> lot, unfortunately. It doesn't have a side effect. Um. No. All right. So, Martin, you run up behind the hex shield and say, I'll save you, Oron, and you fire out your little taser. It impacts the mech, like, center mass, but uh, unfortunately, it just does a little jolt. Like, it doesn't even flinch as the electricity fl flows into it. Dang. But hey, it made you feel better, so you got that going for you. All right, up next is BZ. What do you have going on? Uh, BZ is going to run up the drone and kick it as hard as she can with the heel of her foot, increasing the mass of it as she goes with a bionic punch. All righty. Yeah. 23 is more than enough to hit. 
forgot. I forgot. Uh, okay, 1d8 bludgeon. So it does four damage, and I regain one barrier. Damage. All right. Sorry, two barrier. So you uh, run up and do a kick across the uh, drones. Well, it doesn't really have a face, but you kick it pretty good. Unfortunately, your kick is not strong enough to break through its shields. Sorry. Now you're fine. Mike. It is your turn, though, Oron. Is that so? Okay. I will use my, uh, as an instant, I apply slam to the lifted creature. Okay. It deals 2d8 bludgeoning damage. Twelve damage to it. All right. Uh, is that enough to take it down? Unfortunately, no. Uh, it is, uh. well, I would say standing, but not so much anymore. Hmm. Okay. That's a bit bothersome, but oh well. Um, applying... Yeah, I'm so bloody wounded, I think I will spend my bonus action to reactivate my barrier and okay. then use my next action to apply Metagel. All right. And I spent for the advanced stuff, which I believe is four, uh, 44 plus 4. Heal uh, for 15. 15. All right. While he's doing all that, Juno, what are you doing? Uh, being taunted by an assault drone. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'll just take a just take a shot at it at the assault drone that was firing at me. Alrighty. A ten, ten is unfortunately not enough. Damn it. And then, yeah, bonus action, double tap shot. A twenty four will hit it though. A. So it does a grand total of what? Two piercing? Because you don't have a sneak attack on this one. Yeah. Not a lot. Yeah, so something. you ping it. It's still floating, unfortunately. And I'm gonna move out of dodge. Alright. So, on the assault drone's turn, uh, the assault drone you shot is going to chase after you. And the one uh, next to BZ is actually going to fly up in the air uh, about nine f nine meters. So it's out of range of your melee attacks, um, but it is able to fire down at you. Stupid jerk, but... <laughs> All right, so let's see. The assault drone firing at Juna has a grand... You would think I would oh. macro these, but I don't for whatever sort I'll reaction reason. give it disadvantage again with sabotage. Okay, so its uh, its first roll is a 13, and its second roll is 11, so it does miss you. Thank you. As for BZ, I believe a 17 does hit you. All the hits, yeah. All right, so that's going to be a grand total of four damage. Which my shield, my barrier takes all of that. Nice. Nice. All right, and then it's Thorin's turn. And Thorin, before you start moving, uh, your Asari handler, Teresa, says, Come on, what are you doing? Get in there. <laughs> Just look at her, look at my sniper, like, right. Um, <laughs> I am going to do a, a very fun turn. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to trigger, as a bonus action, my steady aim mm -hmm. against, uh, if I have the right tool selected, against this one, because I think it'll be funny. Uh, you will um, have to move, because right now you're shooting through the hex shield. Okay, I can move up. Do... Um, and what I'm going to do, though, is making this a fun turn, is I'm taking my standard action to reload. Okay. So I'm just lining everything up. Hmm. And that is everything I can do. Alrighty. So what was it to uh, shake off the effects of the uh, the drone swarm? Uh, a constitution check as an action. And what's the DC on it? Uh, let me... 14. 14. One of them will attempt it. Uh, does not succeed. The other one does not succeed either. So the one remaining drone or mech that is not having to deal with this infection 
uh, is just going to fire his shotgun again at Oron. So Oron... And I'll apply fortification as a reaction. Okay. So plus five AC till my next turn. All right. And I have a feeling that's going to come in handy. Or maybe not. It doesn't even bother you. Just nope. doesn't even tickle. All right. And that is the Rampart Mech's turn. So Martin, what do you got going on? I have a couple different ideas that I could do. Um, one of my spells is Shocking Grasp. So I was thinking coming up here and doing a little Shocking Grasp. Okay. Nineteen nice. is more than enough. So does it? I'm confused. Does it still have? I, like... I have so no idea. It's the attack roll. You have advantage if the target is wearing armor. Then you hit them. They become light. They become primed for lightning and take a d6 of lightning damage. And then after the damage, they have to make a Constitution saving throw or become stunned until the end of your next turn. And if they still have shields. While they make the save, they uh, have advantage on the on the save. All right, so they're going to do their Constitution save, which they actually succeed on. All right, so you run up, you sort of do a Palpatine where you do unlimited power at the mech, and you do impact it quite well. Uh, however, your lightning does not linger, unfortunately. Then we have BZ. Your your foe is up in the air. My foe is uh, was it nine meters? You said, yeah, about nine meters up. All right, so I, I can't jump that high. Boo it! Uh, but I can. All right, dealing with landlord stuff. So let's see, shockwave. I can create a cascading shockwave in a ten meter long line. So I'm gonna. Shockwave it. That is a dexterity saving throw. Dexterity saving throw. Alrighty. Or it falls prone. Which would be uh, rather important because it is flying right now. That is correct. Yes. Which means <laughs> it is going to be more or less slammed to the ground as your shockwave emanates out from you. And uh, I'm going to say that with the falling to the ground, that is enough to yeah, absolutely damage, murderize sure. it. So there's only one assault drone left up at the moment. All right. Oron, what do you got going on? I am tired of these bleeping mechs on this bleeping stage. So I'm going to just do a simple action and th embed my axe into the wounded one's body. Okay. And B. Um, and I am going to apply my. Ooh, do I want two with a twelve? Have we figured out where their AC is at? I don't think so. No. I'm going to apply my saving face to it to bump that to a seventeen. A seventeen is enough to hit it. Eight points. Eight points of slashing damage. This thing is looking bad. Like, maybe if you poked it a little bit harder, it would fall over. But unfortunately, as your uh, Monty Millick, your axe slams into it again, it is not enough to put it down for good. Citadel, Sec Citadel Security is apparently spending a lot of mech, or spending good money on their mechs. Apparently. Juna, what do you got going on? Yeah, this drone's just being annoying. Step out around the corner and let me reread this. Yeah. Six meters. Yeah, bro, I'll cast uh, action cast overload on these three. Okay. So what is the DC 14? And they're rolling decks, which they have a plus two on. D20. Uh, they all succeed. So do they take half damage? Yes, they do. Yeah, half damage on success. All right, so they take uh, five damage, each of them, which is enough to cause a thing. So you're, you overload the first mech, and it begins sparking violently. 
And as it does, it falls to the ground and literally explodes. And by that, uh, I oh, need... No. Let's see. When a mech dies, it vents excess heat, yada, yada, yada. Two meter radius. So that's going to be an immediate 4d8 damage to everyone within two meters. Oh, no. Oh, no. I Ouch. didn't know this would happen. I'm sorry. So, Martin, you're going to take 19 damage. So 15 is absorbed by my armor, so I take four. Uh, do you actually have armor or do you have a shield? I, I'm not 100% sure. I have medium oh. armor, armor. Oh, so okay far. then. And then, uh, Oran, you're going to take 18. And then the drone next to it takes two, doesn't it? Yup. Which is enough to put it down and begin oh, sparking no. and overloading. So, Martin... You also take 18. Oh, no. Oran, you take 16. And then the other mech is fine. It's just going to take the, the 16 just fine. But basically, Juno, you have caused a cataclysmic chain reaction that has not ended well for your allies. I'm just going to bonus action, turn invisible, and hope nobody saw me. Uh, <laughs> I will roll perception on that. At disadvantage because I'm invisible. So I, <laughs> you work for the attack. I, I have a question for Oron. Is Oron still up? Uh, he's currently AFK. Oh, he's AFK? All right. Oof. Well, uh, the assault drone is going to see all this. It was going to shoot at Juna, but instead it's just going to sort of fly over here a little confused. Uh, and it's going to spot BZ, and BZ is going to be the target of its attention. So that's going to be a grand total of... Yeah, I'm, i got to remember to macro these. Uh, does a 12 hit you, BZ? I think he's gone AFK. He might be AFK. So while you were gone, McCall, you took a grand total of 32 damage. Ooh, from uh, how many sources? Well, uh, Juna overloaded one drone, which exploded for 18. And then okay. that explosion caused the other drone to explode for another 18. Okay. Is it 18 or 16, the second one? Uh, the second one was a 16. Okay, yeah, you're right. It was an 18 and a 16. Yeah. Okay. And were there any deck saves or whatnot to half damage? Unfortunately, no. It was just straight up damage. Okay, so that was, sorry, 32? 32. 32 minus 9. Or, sorry, 34. Ah. Darn, I am currently unconscious. Okay. So what happens as you, quote unquote, two. fall unconscious is a uh, sort of a shield envelops you, preventing you from firing out or moving, but you are effectively out of combat for the time being. Okay. And then, uh, let's see. Uh, we'll resolve BZ when they get back. So, Thorin, you have seen all of this. How do you react? Uh, amateur. And I'm going to bonus action, steady aim this one, because mm -hmm. he's still alive. And it's just... Okay. It's two meters, you said? Two meters. <clears throat> Well, he's already out of combat, I guess, so... Whatevs. <laughs> um, and I'm outside of two meters, so I won't get hit. So, there we go. And I'm going to take my Mantis shot. Yeah. Uh, that, that is a six, my friend. Give me a second here. I just want to check something. Uh, your military training is team. I'm just going to pop it in here. Uh, yeah. So that gives me advantage, actually. Okay, you may roll again. Yay! A 21 is there. more than enough to hit it. And that also gives me my sneak. Because mm -hmm. I had an advantage. Yeah. <clears throat> nope. Nice. And that is enough that uh, your bullet slams into this Rampart mech. It detonates. Had Aura not been covered by the shield, I'm going to roll it for shits and giggles, he would have taken 15 damage. But uh, as the simulation comes to a close, uh, all the mechs uh, stand up and return to their initial uh, locations. 
and uh, your Asari begins uh, giving you some colorful advice, mostly in the form of, all right, so do you all know what went wrong, or should I tell you exactly how badly you fucked up? Hostage is fine. Mech's not. Yes, but in the process, you almost lost one individual. In fact, that last shot would have killed him, I'm sure. In the other process, two of you were running off on your own and more or less harried out of combat by one drone each. <sighs> these are the these are the Spectre candidates they send me? I performed my assigned role within the cast perfectly. They were all too busy shooting at me to ignore the hostages. Bought time. And I toss the arm at, uh, I toss the limbed or delimbed mech's arm to the ground. Only minor damage was sustained. Yeah, minor. You uh, would have gotten caught unconscious there. I have a cast. I would have been fine. Hmm. Well, you have the option of taking a break and trying this again, or I can just give you your score now. The objective was outlined to save the hostages, and that means we have to sacrifice one of ourselves to get that objective done, then that has to be necessary. Hmm. Rather ruthless way of looking at things, but I can see your argument. Although I would appreciate that more observation and awareness be put into anyone's attacks against certain mechs, and I'm just going to look at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm no, I'm no prideful idiot. I understand. I was not aware that they would explode upon destruction. Well, are we done here? Sounds like uh, maybe you all have some things to hash out. Come on up. I'll reset the whole simulation, and maybe if you uh, can get your heads on straight, you can try it again. And that is where we're going to take our 10-minute break. So okay. we'll be back in uh, about 10 minutes, everybody.
back, everybody. Where we last left off our intrepid specters to be, they were uh, recuperating after a simulation that uh, maybe didn't go as well as they thought it would. Um, but we are sort of in the aftermath of that with them discussing uh, how they can improve for the future. I mean... If you ask me, I still just say that it went fine. I think we did okay. I mean, none of the hostages died. We all got shot up instead of them. And I don't think any of us minded or on a minor injury. Yeah, I suppose me taking the brunt of the damage kind of helped everyone else. Well. I know you like getting up close and personal, but why not uh, waiting for at least one to be taken down to see if anything happens, if it's a mech, at least. My weapons of choice were a shotgun or my axe, both of which are extremely close-range weapons. I could, see those I could see those assault drones were far more mobile and far more likely to cause interference, preventing us from attacking the real threat. Best to engage the real threat directly as quickly as possible to tie them up. I trusted you, my, the rest of my cast, to have my back. Did not expect them to blow up, though. <laughs> That's a trick. Yeah, that yeah. that hurt a little bit. I wonder if I could rig myself to blow up should I die. Leave one final s curse word to my foe before they slay me. Probably not for the best, though. If you are going to attempt such a design, make sure no one else is in the armory with you. Noted. Teresa just sort of shakes her head and says, I, I, I honestly don't know where to begin. If your ideal of acceptable casualties is two of your own, apparently we need to have a talk about acceptable casualties. I, again, at the worst, Orin would have only sustained an injury, you no know, casualties. Yes, Could have but been you need done to think better. longer term. If he sustains an injury, that means you have to basically deal with him and the hostages in the same time. What if reinforcements come in? I was planning on giving one of the hostages my shotgun. And Teresa looks at you very confused and then pinches the bridge of her nose and says... Wait, wait, wait. You you were going to give one of the hostages, someone who probably hasn't been trained in the use of... I don't even know where to begin saying what's wrong with that statement. They let themselves get captured because they were weak. This is my attempt to get them stronger so that they will survive any future pro problems. She just looks to the rest of you utterly just... <laughs> Ignore him. Could it have been done better? Obviously, yes, but it was still done good, well, and got the job done. I say it's a was a good first try. Yes, well, if we're calling it a first try, there is room for improvement, that's for sure. Would you like your grade, or would you like me to keep it secret? Give it to me straight. You May get a well. D. A D plus. Are we graded individually or as a group? As a group. Can I protest that? I think I did perform admirably and should be judged on my own merit. Roll a uh, roll of persuasion. <laughs> 27. Damn, natural 20. <laughs> Teresa says, all right, fine. BZ, I'll give you a C plus. Uh, fine. It's acceptable. Giving us a simple scoring system like this does not show where we need to improve upon. I mean, I can I follow it down. I would prefer that because I follow typical Turian protocol in a hostage situation. We are expected to have casualties. Ah, well, let's start there then. Sure, as a specter, you're supposed to get the job done by any means. But does that mean you're supposed to just sacrifice people willy nilly? Some might say yes. Others... Not so I much. Did. I'm in the latter camp. I did pick up on one thing that should be discussed of that could be improved. Martin here jumped the gun and fired before we were all ready. 
and triggered the uh, mechs to drop their shield. Well, if we're talking about problems with teamwork, I would call to your attention that overload that decidedly blew up in two of your teammates' faces. And I've already said that I was not aware that they'd explode and have stated that I apologize for the action. I spit out some red paint that got in my mouth during the explosion. You did what you thought was right. All we can do is learn and move on. I mean, think of it this way. What if one of those mechs had been next to the hostages? We would be dealing with, well, not dead hostages, but deceased, quote-unquote. Then I say that I have performed my job admirably. Well, as I said, there's room for improvement. And if I tell you everything that's wrong, well, we'd be here all day. So, why don't we take five? Stretch your legs, stretch your legs. Maybe poke your head into the presidium, and then we can try this again. Right. Very well. And Tyresa sort of walks off to go do other things for a time. So leaves you alone in CSEC Academy. Do we have quarters? No, do you have not been assigned rooms? any yet. Uh, Thorin's going to actually go up after her. Okay. She turns. Excuse me. At, yes. Do we have assigned quarters? It's the Citadel. Whatever you can find is yours. Consider it okay. part of your Spectre training. We got to see how resourceful you are. Very well. Thank you. She nods and gonna... continues on. I was like, so it looks like they don't have any rooms for us, and he wants to be resourceful to find our rooms ourselves. My try a cure ward. <laughs> well, I've spent a plenty of time on the Citadel. Just rather not mill about. There's nothing. It's basically a tourist trap in Presidium. I guess I can just follow you around the wards. Cool. What about you, Oren? Nah. They should still have the... Despite the fact that Batarians have closed their embassy, most likely the Citadel government still has it there. Should the Batarian decide to come back, I'll just use it. I think those are just offices, though. Any space can... And still far more spacious than in most quarters I've grew, grown up in. Okay. And do you, Martin? This is my first time here. I don't even know where to start looking. <laughs> well, this will be fun for you. <laughs> And yeah, so to sort of paint the picture for Scotty, mostly uh, the wards are pretty much the name for the cities that are on each of the Citadel's arms, sort of like what you're seeing on screen right now in Rule 20. And it's fairly extensive, like there's five arms, so there's five wards and it's I'm trying to remember the actual stats off the top of my head, but I believe each arm is more or less a New York City in and of itself. So it's massive. Oh, yeah. So like an onboard com computer that I could ask, like, where the humans are? You can indeed. In fact, you go up to a terminal and a hologram of an Asari pops up and says, Hello, my name is Avina. How might I be of assistance? Well, hello there, Avina. I was wondering where the Earth Embassy is. The Earth Embassy is located at the following location, and she gives you very extensive and very direct directions to get you to the to the uh, embassies. Well, thank you very much. Of course, it is my function as Citadel VI to provide guests and other services. 
Indeed. Might need your help here eventually more. It's my first time here. Might I suggest you take a guided tour of the Presidium? I'll make sure I put that on the things to do. She doesn't say anything else. She just sort of sits there like a hologram. That'll be all. And then the hologram deactivates. So yeah, for what I'm hearing, it sounds like uh, Martin's going to go to the embassies, try to score something there. Uh, I think, what, Thorin is going to just go to Zakira Ward? <laughs> yeah, find an apartment. Uh, what are the rest of you going to do? Are you going to follow along with uh, Martin? Are you going to follow Thorin? Or are you just going to see what you can find on your own? I'm going to follow Martin. Okay. I'm going to I'm just going to uh, shadow along Thorin. Basically, I don't Wherever I go, I'm going to get looked down upon. How much time do we have exactly, Gil? Uh, as much as you want, really. The uh, the Asari did say five-ish minutes, but you've got the sense that she's more or less just going to run you through the same simulation over and over until you meet some high lofty standard of hers. So, but we have, like, you know... A vague amount of time, so it's not... Yeah, like you. Not I would say day. you have enough time to go apartment hunting, if that is what you wish. He's just going to go to the bar and dance and have fun. Ah, are you going to do the shepherd shuffle? Yes. You may have <laughs> advantage for... Or you may have inspiration for doing the shepherd shuffle. <laughs> Which, Scotty, if you're not aware of the shepherd shuffle, it uh, it's worth a YouTube. It's that, it's that bad. No, no, it's that great. Alrighty then. <laughs> it's inspiring. <laughs> All right. So for those of you hunting for an apartment, uh, is investigation still a thing? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. I would like you all. Well, those of you searching for an apartment, let's have an investigation, please. Oh, no training in it. Yeah. I'll just uh, give it. I'll use help and give advantage to forums. All right. So oh, okay. roll it again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not <Woo>! any better. <laughs> All right, so uh, Thorin, you go to Zakara Ward, and uh, Zakara Ward being Zakara Ward, yeah, you can find something on level 29, but uh, it's going to cost you a bit. How much is a bit? I'm actually trying to scramble and find a finances here. Uh, how many credits do you have right now? Uh, I'm at 3,500. 3,500. Uh, if you're staying a week, it is 300 credits. Okay. I'll do a week for now. Okay. And I'm looking for uh, either a, uh, what do you call it, um, a room next to or near a uh, fire escape uh, or near the uh, stairs, not the elevator. Okay. Yeah, there is something that would fit those needs. Uh, is anyone sharing the apartment with you? I will cool. look I'll at you. Probably, like... Yeah. Um, I'll grab us. I do actually wish to discuss something about the simulation, and all. I'll grab a drink from down. I'll go grab a drink from somewhere, and we can talk about our tactics. Okay. Uh. Just gonna look at her like, are, are we bunking together, or are you gain your own room? I would be uh, welcome to bunking with you if you wish. I need to go look not... for a room now with uh, two bedrooms separated by wall for sure. <laughs> All right. So my follow-up question is: uh, Juna gonna pay rent, or is uh, Thorn gonna spot her? I mean, Duna has no interest in paying, and so I was like, I'll just crash with <laughs> So I'll be paying. <laughs> mm. All right. Yeah, you can find a two bedroom, no problem. It's okay. going to cost a little bit more, 325 But yeah, uh, Scotty, Martin is going to the embassy. So. Uh, if this was Mass Effect 1 or before the current time, like a year before, 
um, the human embassies would be still pretty small, uh, all things considered. Um, there would be pretty much a uh, few uh, would be ambassadors working the, the main office with uh, Ambassador Udina, um, obviously handling the big calls, as it were. Um, but since the whole Battle of the Citadel and with uh, the addition of a human, uh, Mr. Anderson, to the council, uh, council being the galactic, the head of the galactic government, uh, the human embassies have almost exploded in popularity and in size. So when you walk into the embassies, Martin, uh, you find that it is a flurry of activity and you actually have to wait in line a little bit. And it's maybe about 10, 15 minutes before you finally get to the front of the line, just at the front desk. And you see a very overworked uh, woman that looks like she needs some coffee pretty damn badly. And she says, all right, uh, next, uh, what, can, what can I help you with? Hello, I was uh, am new to the Citadel and was wondering if I could make arrangements for lodging, either through the embassy or at the embassy. She sighs and begins typing in her console. Are you a family member of one of the ambassadors or diplomats? I am in training for the Spectre program. She looks you up and down once again and says, Well, such as it is, I can provide you the following list. And uh, she hands you a list of uh, possible locations and individuals you could ask about uh, obtaining lodging and she says you'll find that those individuals are ones we have contracted with in the past they should be able to find you something that would suit your needs and your price range is there anything else just that i think you are doing a great job at your job hmm thank you now unless you're going to get me some coffee it seems there's quite the line behind you Indeed it does. You have a good day. You do as well. And yeah, the uh, the list of uh, sort of embassy adjacent or embassy related uh, contacts. The good news is that when you finally find a price point for your apartment, um, it is actually much lower than uh, the price that Thorn found. Uh, yours is only going to be two fifty. I'll take it. All right. Now, what about the rest of you? I mean, we've we've handled Thorin, we've handled Juna, we've handled Martin. What uh, what's Oron and BZ doing? Oron was with me. Yeah, I'm I'm just sort of wandering about with him. My plan is to just uh, jury pry open the door to the shut it off uh, Batarian embassy, find a combat mat, and sleep in there. Okay. So, what is BZ doing then? BZ is just relaxing after a couple hard missions, polishing off one too many drinks, and just nonstop dancing in like some kind of average young person's dance club. Okay. And, and dancing away, shepherd shuffling. And... Alrighty. So she works hard, she plays hard. Noted. So we're sort of at the point where we could continue, but I worry that if we go any further, uh, Bishop's character will be a little bit out of sorts. So I tell you what, why don't we end the session there and we'll try to go longer next session. How does that sound? Sounds Works good. for me. All righty. Well, Twitch, YouTube, etc. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, episode too. Hopefully uh, the technical issues weren't too bad, but uh, Twitch and YouTube, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you later. Bye stream. Bye. Bye.